The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Tuesday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and you got markets accelerating higher right now. We jump to the S&Ps. You talk about a bounce, folks. We're above 4,600 in the S&Ps. As recently as March 15th, two weeks ago exactly, you had a 41.29 price point and that's within market hours, not even talking about where we were pre-market overnight. 41.29, folks, you're talking about 475 S&P points. I'll say it again, 475 S&P points, remarkable. You chuck out the NASDAQ 100, we're up 166 points, that's 1.1%. You were trading with a 12,000 handle back on March 15th. You're trading with a 15,000 handle right now, up more than two thousand points we're up 2200 points to be exact on an index that had a 12,000 handle folks 2400 points would be a 20 percent pop in the nasdaq 100 man these numbers watch out the dow back above 35,000. 35,131, you're up 8 tenths percent russell's up 17 points right now at 2092 on the reverse side of that a lot of geopolitical easing right now as you have russia to get to the bottom line of the story, saying it's cutting some military operations in Ukraine as a de-escalation. They're going to reduce military op, op They're going to reduce military operations near Kiev, and uh, yeah, potential for whether there should be talks. Uh, NATO split on whether they should have those talks, but nonetheless, looks like a de-escalation in the market, taking it and running with it. Crude backing off. We're at one hundred dollars and forty-five cents. You got gold backing off. We're off $46. We're at 1898. Here's what I'll say about gold, folks. You take a look at the run we had. You start that run at about 1800, just below there. On February 3rd, you rise up to 2078. We're sitting exactly at that 618. That's also where you got the bounce back on March 16th as well, only 13 days ago. But right back to that price point, the 618 is where you chopped around a little bit towards the end of February as well. We'll see if gold holds that 618 there. Uh, gold trading lower on that news. And yeah, we have a slight bounce again in the 10-year, but no real huge action uh, in the bonds right now as the yield of the 10-year sitting basically right where we were yesterday when I did the program. 10-year yield, 2.446%. We'll call it 2.45% uh, to round it as 10-year. Staying steady, you get the 30-year right now up 19 ticks. 148.07, and we jump over to the volatility index, folks. 18.88. Haven't seen this price point in a while. You look at that drop off yesterday, man. We end at 19.50. Today, you see the drop off below 19. And again, putting it back on a daily, we have not seen this little volatility priced into this market, folks, since January 13th. It's March 23rd, 29th, excuse me. January 13th, it is March 29th. You're talking about more than two months, two months in about a week uh, since we've been at that level in the volatility index, quite a fall off from where we were March 15th. VIX was at 34. You have the NASDAQ 100 trading up 2,000 points. You have the S&Ps trading up 475 points and you have the VIX dropping from 34 to 1888. Here's all I'll say about this one. Can't go up forever, folks. I mean, we're sitting right near all-time highs now with everything going on, with the Fed lifting off on rate hikes in dramatic fashion uh, for the remainder of the year, at least right now, as the data says. We still have geopolitical tensions. Uh, be careful in this market trading at 4,600. Yeah, at 4,100 and change, you can make a good argument that maybe the market was oversold. I imagine at 4,600 plus in the S&P with everything going, everything going on, that you may be able to make the case that we're a little bit overbought right now now interesting in terms of s p climbing above where you were on february 2nd let's zoom in on the action here i'm going to take this longer term fibonacci trend off just from the highs we were at okay we just crossed the 618 that's where we turned previously that price point you had a high of 45.86 in the beginning of february we got up to 
585 and 4583 on February 10th. There was the sell off down to about 4131. We've just crossed those levels, folks. Uh, 4605. It's going to be an interesting day. To say the least, uh, my dad in the Tiger's Den right now talking about uh, Europe. Yeah, big numbers in Europe, man. How about the DAX up more than 3%? FTSE up 1.1%. Cacarole up 3.3% as well. Uh, U.S., Ukraine, excuse me, Russia talks uh, potential, uh, raising the hopes there of the market as a little bit of de-escalation. That we'd all like to see just from a humanity perspective all right let's jump around to some of the headlines so there it is russia to reduce the military operations near kiev uh nato allies let's close that are split on whether they should talk to putin berlin paris seek dialogue others say putin can't be trusted i'd say most would say that putin can't be trusted uh interesting to see where you go from there though moscow as they say cutting Ops in Ukraine, de-escalation. Russian officials say Putin Zelensky meeting possible. Later, uh, Ukraine said no deal reached at Ist Inst Istanbul talks Tuesday. The fact you have a Russian official coming out and saying there's a potential for the two presidents to talk, there's a de-escalation near Kiev. Um, it's got to be good news. Not sure if it's going to matter, but it's got to be good news. Any news on a de-escalation, maybe you get some talks. Not sure how you get out of this, uh, but it's going to take some talks. And the market liking that. And boy, the market is running with it. Now, the DAX is up more than 3% right now. But Germany was going to be a lot more impacted than the U.S. in this war. Energy purposes, et cetera, just being in Europe. Not surprising. They're getting a bigger reaction. But boy, we get a pop from here, man. S&Ps are only up 8 tenths percent, right? You're talking about you ever push 2 to 3% right now. You're going to be talking about pushing 46.50 to 4,700 in the S&Ps, folks. You're talking about trading at prices January 12th. You get up to 4,700, man. The run we have had, remarkable, to say the least, in the S&Ps as we trade higher. All right, jumping around to what else I have going on in terms of headlines. Talking about the run, Apple, best run since 2003, brings $3 trillion back in focus, 11 straight days, and $400 billion to the market cap. I often talk about it, folks. It's remarkable that uh, Apple, they're dealing with more than 16 billion shares. Every single dollar you're trading at, you're adding $16 billion in market cap. Not sure how many companies there are that trade over uh, a market cap of $400 billion. I mean, to put that in context, folks, I think Facebook at some of the lows, now Facebook has popped, I'm sure, with the market, not as dramatic, from 185 to 223. We jump over to the Analyze tab on Facebook. You're talking about a company valued at $615 billion. I mean, put that in context. Apple has risen in the last 11 days, $400 billion, which Facebook was approaching an entire value of $500 billion at the lows. You check out Apple shares, man. That is a run, folks. You climb, and again, 182 and change, I believe it is. Let's say, because they eclipsed it back on January 4th to become the first company worth $3 trillion. Let's see if they put the price in here. Uh, yeah, not sure they do. 4.7% away from that $3 trillion mark is currently where they sit. They talk about yields in here as well. Quite remarkable for a company trading at more than 28 times forward earnings in a rising rates environment with supply chain issues and inflation. I would agree, folks. You know, the market probably deserved a bounce. But boy, we got some big multiples again. And we got a lot of risks out there. And we got certain banks coming out and saying that we might get 50 basis points for the next four meetings. And then we'll get two more after that. There's a lot out there to rise from 150 to 175 when you got 16 billion shares outstanding. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back, talking to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets right now sitting S&Ps right at about 40 points positive. NASDAQ positive 175, Dow positive 269. Going to be especially interesting to see where this market goes on the open with all the volatility. You got Europe, DAX up about 3% right now. Uh, jumping over to some of the other headlines. So Robinhood, they're going to be adding four additional hours to extended trading for clients. Interesting to see how that's going to uh, spice things up potentially before and after the closing bell. I mean, if you think about it, right, with technology and where everything is going, there's really no reason why you can't have markets trading 24-7. That's how crypto trades, man, and they go, crypto markets go wild over the weekend. Where we've reached right now, there really is no reason that you cannot trade an equity that you have outside of normal hours. I mean, imagine it. Yes, exchanges are important, right? But now you're having brokerages. Uh, from now on, they're talking about trading 7 a.m. till 8 p.m. It's only a matter of time until that gets expanded as well, folks, in my opinion. Because you think about it, what's the difference between 8 p.m. and midnight? What's the difference between midnight and 4 a.m.? No difference at all. And then you say, well, why only the weekdays, right? I mean, we all sit and we wait for those futures to open at 6 o'clock on Sunday. Realistically, there is no reason why at some point you don't see some type. And maybe it happens with, through crypto. Maybe you get some kind of fintech um, app or something, right? I'm just speaking broadly. But there is no reason why, when you think about it, that you can't trade an equity outside of specific hours when you think about what gets done with crypto, et cetera, on those. Uh, right now, 7 a.m. till 8 p.m. Before that, you only had 30 minutes before the open, so 9 a.m. you had to wait until, and then you had two hours after the close. So they were going 9 till 6. They're now going 7 till 8. They expanded on two hours on each side. Our customers often tell us they're working or preoccupied during regular market hours, limiting their ability to invest on their own schedule or evaluate and react to important market news. I take it for what it's worth. I imagine that's the trend, folks. Fox, um, Robinhood, um, they started off with the free commissions, and that's where the whole world went. I imagine that you're going to start seeing more and more ability for retail traders to trade outside of 9.30 a.m. till 4 p.m. hours. And that's probably the beginning of it right there. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks as we look for this market to open in nine minutes from right now. We jump to Amazon shares. 
Catching a pop to about 34.10. Just remarkable run for all these equities, folks. Amazon, March 8th, trading at 26.71. You look at the lows we had of about March 15th with the market. You're talking about Amazon up about 500 bucks from that price point. You're going to be pushing 3,400. Still about $370 off the all-time highs. Microsoft had quite the run yesterday. Up to 310. You're going to push it up to 313. You're coming up just to the highs we had on February 2nd. So it's going to be interesting. Keep your eyes on these markets because you have the markets bumping up to critical areas across the board on many different equities and indices. Uh, Microsoft, not hard to see on the chart. That is an area that was prior resistance for Microsoft shares. Let's jump over to Google, see how they're trading. Google, you're back in an area you did trade lower from back on January 13th. Google got quite the pop on their earnings in February, got a new high of 3,052, but you are up to an area that was an area of a little bit of resistance. Outside of that earnings pop, also kind of an area where Google turned lower. We jump back to Apple that's had quite the pop. Not hard to see that Apple is in an area that's been a little bit of resistance going back. Now, just checking out the indices to match up those price areas. As I mentioned, NASDAQ 100, right back to where we were on February 2nd as you look for that area. We jump over to the S&P, actually above that area now on the S&P. S&P a little bit stronger than the NASDAQ 100 as those growth stocks especially hit hard as you've seen yields rise dramatically to push almost 2.5% on the yields. And as I say that, we jump over to notes and bonds. We put it back on a 15-minute chart. Now, nah, five-minute chart. Talk about a pop, folks. Uh, we're up to 122.03, man. You just rose. I mean, these moves are just staggering, folks. It is across the board, man, from 8 in the morning you just rose a full point in the tenure right now. And you have yields dropping, I'm trying to figure out where if I could peg the yield in terms of where we were at that low. Can't I? No, it's not going to be that quick. Okay. Uh, nonetheless, we have yields dropping nearing 2.41% now as the market continues to rise. We got the opening bell in seven minutes from right now. Uh, we jump around to some of the other stocks. Let's see how bank stocks are trading right now. Quite the volatile day for banks yesterday. Right now, you're going to be up about two bucks. The whole market's just going to be positive on that type of geopolitical news, folks. Let's jump to some of the airlines. Trading higher in a big way, of course. Uh, Delta up a buck 50 overnight to pushing almost $40. We jump to United shares up to 45.48. American shares trading higher to 17.83. Domestically, you get a pop as well. Up to 15 bucks for JetBlue. We jump over to Southwest shares up to 45.45. Boeing shares up to 191. Airbnb right now to 171.70. Going to be interesting to see how those travel stocks react with the geopolitical tensions potentially easing in this market. All right, let's jump around to some of the stocks that are making headlines this morning. And we jump down the list, FedEx. So their CEO is going to step down from a role at the company that he founded more than 50 years ago, Smed, uh, Smed, Fred Smith. He'll become executive chairman on June 1st. He's going to be replaced by CEO, um, excuse me, replaced as CEO by their president and chief operating officer, Raj Subramanian, Rene. Let me get that. Subra Manium. There we go. Uh, FedEx positive, but man, everything's positive this morning. And I think that was, uh, well, no, that's a, that's a move on that news. So from 230 to 239, looks like they're happy to see some succession in there. You're trading right at 239, which is right at that 382. Uh, FedEx still well off the highs you had last year, 319. Lowe's and Home Depot. I was checking out these yesterday. Interesting to see how they go with the housing market right now. Lowe's back to 213 from 263. You jump over to Home Depot. You're back to the 618 from the run they had. Interesting, right? You got Home Depot back to an area that you found support at in early June. You jump over to Lowe's shares. And not quite the same in terms of the run you had. I think Lowe's was putting about a 382 versus Home Depot pushing the 618. And yeah, you notched before that 382. Now, these companies, both of them, as you've seen yields rise dramatically, quite the sell-off from March 24th. Last week, you just saw a huge sell-off as you had a little bit of slowdown, potentially in the housing market. You have rising yields. That's the sell-off on Home Depot. Similar sell-off lows, but nice when you're back to an area that you've saw support in, as in February 24th. And you're right back to that 618 for Home Depot shares as well. All right, other equities making moves this morning. Uh, Uber, so it looks like Uber, now we have some Uber in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options, folks. It looks like they're going to try and corner the taxi market. So they're close to an agreement with San Francisco taxi companies to include taxis in its ride-hailing platform in that city. Uh, 
they recently struck a similar agreement with New York City. So I wonder how that's going to play out in the future, that Uber is deciding, guess what? We're just going to be the platform for everybody, our own ride-hailing service and taxis, which are still a part of commerce. Um, I wonder what kind of deal, I wonder what kind of profits, but interesting that they're kind of locking that down, because how do you come in as a company like Lyft? Do you make a similar deal? I wonder what the details are. I'm going to be digging to find out. But Uber, with the market trading higher, uh, they're getting... A pop by about a buck, so no huge pop on that news, as they'd be up a buck, I imagine, anyway, on that news. GameStop, the Reddit sucks. Let's see how they're doing today. Off a bit, but yeah, as they said, you talk about a run, man. I think they said that's the 11th straight day. Let's see, four, eight, nine, ten. Today would be the 11th straight day if they get the run. You just traded from 80 to 190. Be careful if you're in those equities, man. God bless you if you're still in it for that run. Uh, AMC catching a pop yesterday all those meme stocks we jumped to the cannabis stocks not so much still sitting at about 794 all right folks we're coming back for the opening bell this should be a good one stay tuned i'll be right back in three minutes Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We get markets open right now, and you have the markets so catching a little bit of a bid, you could say, on the open. Now, you look where we are. You trade higher all yesterday. The market begins to reach higher at about 3 in the morning. You really escalate higher at 7.30 in the morning. You were trading at 45.81. We're trading right now up 41 points in the S&Ps at 46.09 in this market. Quite the market, man, across the board. We jump to crude. We got a 99 print in crude right now, 99.33, and you talk about a drop off, man. 7.30, uh, the news breaks, the potential talks, potential de-escalation, um, looking for a ceasefire, potentially a bunch of different end lines out there, all pretty good. Uh, they're all words right now. We'll see if words turn into actions, but nonetheless, crude drops seven bucks in a heartbeat, man. We not want to be trading that market right now without some defined risk in some capacity. And gold drops pretty fast as well, man. You're down 45 bucks on the session. Now, remember, <clears throat> gold uh, trades on a session that ends basically in the afternoon. So you're getting a $45 print, but that is down from where we were yesterday afternoon of a price point of about 1935 or so. So that is where you get the $45 print. Uh, where we were in terms of the drop off on that news, gold drops about $18 or so on the news of potential easing. And yeah, these markets are running higher, folks. Let's check in on Europe right now. In Europe, you get the DAX sitting still up about 3.1%, FTSE up 3.2%, CAC Carole now up 3.5% as our s and is inch ever higher, 1.1% in the positive right now, NASDAQ 100, 1.3%, and the Dow. We're talking 35,258 in the Dow as well. Boy, we almost got some video game numbers already to end the month of March, man. You talk about some volatility. We jump over to the VIX right now, 1875 on the volatility index right now. All right, we jump from markets, we jump to homes, home prices. Heated up to start the year with huge surges in Arizona and Florida. Home prices nationally, I mean, what's happening in housing markets, man, watch out, rose 19.2% year over year in January, up from 18.9% in December. The 10 city comp annual, annual increase was 17.5%, up from 17.1%. The 20 city comp was 19.1%. Phoenix, Tampa, well, we know Tampa's in Florida, folks. They don't say Phoenix, Arizona. They say Phoenix, Tampa and Miami saw the biggest annual gains of 32.6, 30.8% and 28.1% respectively. It's amazing what's going on in this market, folks. I just had a friend uh, sold a place for about $2.5 million, bought the place for 950000 in 2017. I mean, and that's not surprising when you're getting one year increases of almost 31%. And as we all know, uh, all markets not created equally sometimes, depending on the property you're getting. Even the higher price properties, even seeing a higher run than that as you have people leaving the big cities, coming down to Tampa, coming down to Florida, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Boca, uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. Just amazing numbers, folks. 31% rents on the rise in dramatic fashion as well. But really remarkable on a national level that you got a 19% year over year rise. And imagine you got 19%, and then you're going to throw some rising rates on top of it that's going to increase the payments you need on top of that. Tough to see that market rising continually, except for the fact that we have inflation. And if you have inflation, assets are on the rise, land, property, et cetera, on the rise. That one is not surprising uh, when you think about it. Washington, D.C., Minneapolis, and Chicago saw the smallest annual gains, although they were still up double digits. I mean, the worst performing cities in real estate were still up double digits. They still beat CPI even at 8%, which is remarkable when you think about that. Uh, while the index is a three-month running average, mortgage rates began to climb in January. So it'll be interesting to see where these statistics go in the next few months. The average rate on a 30-year fixed Ended 2021 at around 3.25 percent, ended January at 3.6 per 8 percent, and now it's flirting with 5 percent. The only thing that comes into that, folks, is that people need a place to live, and rent prices are on the rise as well. So hopefully, if you're able to save some money, maybe you get into a home at 3 percent, 5 percent, 10 percent down, uh, because it's not like you can just save money on rents. I mean, the rents in some of these cities, especially as well, through the roof. So it's it's a it's a rise in steady fact. Uh, and, and it's not like it's just a rise in the housing prices. Inflation. We're going to see where we go. This market is inflated, man, up 50 points. We take a look at where we are now. You put the daily. 
Seems like we might be coming up to at least 4,700. I mean, you're right in the middle of a chop around area, basically. You're now above where we were, the highs of February. You're sitting at 4,617. Maybe we rise to 4,700. But man, as I said, if you're at all thinking about selling in this market, folks, I would be considering it right now, especially if you're on a longer term perspective and you don't want to rind out some potential volatility because, I mean, has the market forgotten that we are going to be in a rising rate environment that we've potentially never seen before? Let's see what we're doing here. Um, I don't think so. So we'll see. We'll see where we go. Sorry for that. Um, Okay, let's jump around to what else stories, other equities moving this morning. Let me get it up. Dave & Buster's, uh, so they are lower after they uh, miss pre-market after a top and bottom line miss in its latest quarter. Dave & Buster's fell eight cents a share, shy of estimates, quarterly earnings 52 cents. We're strong in light of ongoing COVID-19 headwinds. Now, here's the, the tough part about this, folks. I don't know where they do business. I don't know what states they do business in. But people are ready to get back out, man. And and okay, so let's let's put this up here. Yeah, there you go. That makes more sense. They got a conference call going on. I was surprised by that because they should be doing well right now. You know, any we were just saying actually that my family's saying I wish we had more places like something like that, that we could go to around us. We're not quite in Tampa. I think they probably have one in Tampa. I'm not sure. Um, you're up from 29 bucks in December, right? This year alone, Dave & Buster's from 38 to 45. You take a look at the three-year weekly to see the run they've had. You're basically sitting right back at pre-COVID levels, down to $4.61 when the market wasn't sure uh, that these companies would stick around. But you're up to 45.85. They're out with their numbers. Uh, very end of earnings season. Dave & Buster's up 6%. And Pinterest, they're a little bit lower. They get a downgrade from Morgan Stanley to equal weight from overweight. Challenging user trends, including a greater proportion of time spent on activities with lower monetization potential. So Pinterest, this was a uh, pandemic darling, right? And not so much lately. Up to 90 bucks, back to 26. You're basically flat on that news. They get a downgrade, but boy, I mean, that comes after quite the slide from 80 bucks less than a year ago to $26, you're back to pre-pandemic levels for Pinterest. Let's jump around to some of the other social media companies as we come into this break. Facebook's gonna be a study. We're up 1.6%, man. Uh, you jump over to the Analyze tab. I talked about it before. You're talking about a company now valued at about $600 billion. Price to earnings ratio, talking about only 15. Five-year average is 25. Part of this is they're not gonna earn as much when they're spending billions on the metaverse, okay? Uh, but boy, you start looking at the properties they have, folks. Um, I mean, there's reports out there that Instagram alone would be valued at 200 billion to 300 billion dollars, all right? Instagram alone, 200 to 300 billion. Now, I cannot stand the way that Facebook runs their company, all right? But boy, you're looking at a company now that's at 600 billion, Instagram's 200 to 3 billion. They got WhatsApp in there as well. They got Facebook Messenger, and then you have Facebook on top of it as well. And no matter what you think, folks, Facebook, uh, they were making $40 billion in earnings last year. $40 billion in earnings. That's a number that you can understand and value when you're making $40 billion in profits. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We at the markets pulling back a little bit from where we were on the open. S&P still up 37 points right now. NASDAQ up 166, Dow up 350 right now. And folks, if you head on over to the front page of TFNN, we have launched the new Tiger's Den trading room at Discord. Now, and what did I just do? I got audio playing here somewhere. Excuse me. There we go. Excuse me. Uh, we have launched the new Tiger's Den trading room at Discord. It's on the front page of TFNN. Now, folks, we've always had the Tiger's Den. We used uh, Hotcom, which was an outstanding piece of software for its time. And unfortunately, like anything else, technology, man, is amazing how quickly it moves. And it just wasn't keeping up with what we needed to do. And so we're moving the den to Discord. And we're changing the dynamic, folks. We want to bring in just everyone we have because we're fortunate at TFNN to have such a community of traders. Whether you talk about the Tiger's Den, whether you talk about the YouTube Tiger's Den over there, uh, Earl, Baseball, Gary, Ikea, Ikea EKS, uh, Pat, Stone, right? Everybody over in the YouTube Tiger's Den, I encourage you, come on over to TFNN, come on over to the front page. I'll put the link in there uh, in a moment. It's $1 for the year, folks. And that's really only charged to make sure we keep out spammers, we keep out bad actors, et cetera, so people can't just be putting in email addresses coming in there every day and ruining the environment. It's a dollar for the year to make sure, make sure that we bring people in that are serious about creating a community, okay, of traders in there, bouncing trading ideas off. We got about 140 people right now, uh, but I imagine this is gonna go quick. We'll have a couple hundred people in there. Uh, about seven in the morning, six, seven in the morning, it starts becoming active till four or five at night. The great thing about the Tiger's Den now, folks, and Discord, if you've never used Discord, outstanding piece of software, man. Uh, really got introduced to it in building out the Tiger's Den trading room. And you can use it on your mobile, you can use it on your tablet, you can use it on your desktop. So what's so cool is I was sitting last Sunday night and I'm sitting there and I'm sitting on my phone and when I'm watching futures, I'm sitting on my phone, I'm uh, I'm chatting with our man G7, Jeff in the den, I'm chatting with Maria, I'm chatting with Z, White Shark, uh, S&P. I encourage you to check it out, folks. It is $1. You sign up at the front page of TFNN, okay? You fill out the information, you subscribe for a dollar. Uh, after you subscribe, you'll visit Discord and download the piece of software. Now, Discord you can use as part of an internet browser, okay? But I encourage you to download the piece of software because it is much better when you are using the actual download or download the app on your phone or tablet, okay? Uh, you download it, you create an account, 
and then you just simply email us with your account name. And then we make sure that you've come over, we add you to the room, and you're in. It's just that simple, folks. If you have any questions, you can email us at sales at tfnn.com. You can always email me, Tommy, at tfnn.com. Our man Jacob has done an outstanding program, folks. He's been leading the charge on this. Jacob, thanks so much, man. Give him a give him a nod if you if you see him in the Tiger's Den, folks, because he has done an outstanding job getting this all set up. Uh, and you can email Jacob at jacob at tfnn.com. Check it out, folks. We want to get everybody in there. It's a buck for the year. Uh, and there's no strings there's nothing else you're not going to be upsold uh, in there to be a part of the tiger's den that's the charge check it out great community and pretty cool when you add in the fact that you can use it on mobile and tablet because we imagine and as we're, we're talking about it, this is going to allow the den to really start to foster more communication outside of normal trading hours when we're not all at our computer, right? Maybe you're on your, your tablet. Maybe you're hanging out with your iPad. Uh, maybe you're just sitting on your phone watching futures trade at 8 o'clock at night after dinner. All those times, very conducive. So check it out on the front page of TFNN. Um, it, we're excited, folks, and we got a lot of cool stuff planned. So, so check that out. Get in there for a dollar. Okay. Jumping around back to the market, S&P sitting up 42, NASDAQ up 194 right now. We jump to some of the other stories I had pulled up here. As I pull it up, excuse me. All right, we talked about Robinhood. We talked about the stocks making moves and home prices. Apple's nearing $3 trillion again. Uh, and the Fed pivots toward jumbo hikes after being slammed as too slow. Interesting you get this article out, right? Keep this in mind, folks, because, yes, I, I, I imagined we were going to bounce. But, man, who had the S&P, okay? Who had the S&P two weeks ago trading from 4,100 and change to 4,600? Who had the S&P trading at 4,600 by the end of March when we were in March 15th? I imagine that even if we got easing geopolitical tensions, I don't think people would have had the market rising above the February highs. Because, man, we still got rate hikes coming, folks. And that's what the article's talking about. Okay? We got rate hikes coming, and we got jumbo ones coming. In the days after the March 15th and 16th FOMC meeting, Prowl and his colleagues shifted from a longstanding preference of slow and gradual rate hikes, especially interesting that it was March 15th and 16th, because I just showed you that's where the market lows were, right? Um to front-loading policy with a half-point hike on the table in May and more to come. I told you, Citi came out and said there's going to be four 50 basis points hikes um, for the next meetings, and then you're going to get two of them after that. But, folks, you stare at this chart, okay? I mean, if they're teaching this chart in class, imagine you're taking a, a business class at Villanova University, uh, my alma mater that's in the final four, by the way, uh, and they ask you theoretically to look at this chart and decide what you would do if you were the president of the Federal Reserve. You got inflation accelerated to a 40-year high of 7.9%. And the real thing here is that for the first time since 1991, you have core and CPI rising. Because every time prior, you really got some crazy numbers with gas. Uh, dating back to 2009, you see that the core number in yellow, pretty steady even when you had some bonkers numbers with the headline number because of energy. You had the headline number at 5.6%, but they said, hey, guess what? Core is cool at 2.5. Then when you got the flip side of that, right, you had the headline number at minus 1.3%, but the core was still at 1.5. Well, things changed dramatically, folks. Core is through the roof right now. Inflation's through the roof. Uh, you take away energy and gas, and we're still at pretty crazy prices. You better believe that we may get some 50 basis points hikes because if I was given the assignment to look at where we are in this economy, look at where we've been in history, look at where interest rates currently sit, and then say, what should you do as the chairman of the Federal Reserve with a mandate of price stability? That's one of the mandates, folks, uh, and full employment. Well, where's employment? Employment is full. Where's price stability? It's a mess. I just keep it in mind because the more I see it, the more I see this market bounce. I imagine that even as geopolitical tensions ease, we may see the rise of possible uh, rising rates come back to this market and at least pull back some of this. And man, the run has been substantial, folks. Uh, just taking this off and putting a run in terms of the run we've had since March 15th, I'm just going to put a potential Fibonacci retracement in there. <coughs> Excuse me. 
A simple 382 of the run we've had over the last two weeks will bring the market down 165 S&P points. That's a 3% pullback potentially in a healthy acceleration. Uh, and that only brings us back right to where we were trading at almost five days ago, folks. So we're going to see the volatility persist. It's not going to stop anytime soon. Uh, but I imagine we may have a pullback at least in some period of time. What do they say? They say sell the uh, buy the rumor, sell the news. They're buying the rumor of potential talks right now, folks. But what kind of talks are we going to get? You know, things are not going to go back to a, a pre-invasion of Ukraine situation overnight. Tensions on the rise. Still, energy problems not going away overnight and interest rates rising by potentially 2.5 percent more from the Fed this year. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back to finish up the program. Don't leave. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. You got the markets in positive territory, giving back some of those gains. When you put things on a five-minute chart right now, we were up to 46.23 right after the open. That's a five-minute chart, and it's been a little bit of a sell-off since then. You're now only positive by 30 points. As I said, how high is this market going to go, folks? Are we really going to make new all-time highs today at 4,800? Yeah, that would be like a 4 or 5% pop. Not going to happen. But are we really going to make new highs in the next few days? With everything else going on, listen, crude is still at $100. The S&Ps were at 46.23. The Fed is going to rise potentially two and a half more percentage points from where it is right now over the next six meetings. And you have inflation. You have 
wage rising, wages rising, supply chain issues, trying to bring it into fruition, folks. Uh, you may see some selling as we get up to these levels because, man, we haven't seen a run like this in two weeks in a while in this market, uh, especially as tensions still kind of on the rise there. When you think about it, nothing really has been solved in any way at all, concrete. And we've seen this play out before. We've seen Putin talk about things, and meanwhile, he's just sending more troops in. I mean, this is the whole buildup. The whole time Biden was saying that the Ukraine's going to be invaded within days, um, Putin tried to spin something out there that it wasn't even possible, wasn't even happening, wasn't going to happen. Meanwhile, they were just marching more troops in the whole time and then invaded. Wouldn't be trusting those words at all. But we are now stretching into, like, what, five weeks, six weeks of this war. It's remarkable how time has flown. And, yeah, I imagine that it's beginning to weigh on Putin, and I don't know how long it can go on. So we'll see. Remarkable. S&P's up 33, NASDAQ up 160, and the Dow right now up 278. Crude, back above 100 bucks as you have the market receding a bit. You have the crude popping a bit. We're still negative 5 bucks, and you got gold popping as well. So all the market's kind of recoiling from that first move. I mean, gold is right back to where we were practically before we even got that news, which is remarkable when you think about gold trading down 32 bucks. But most of that 32 bucks had already taken place, folks, by the time we got that geopolitical news at about 7.30 this morning. All right, folks, stay tuned. Should be a wild day in the markets as usual lately. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. Uh, Larry's uh, traveling today, so he will not be live. But other than that, we got Fast Market at 12. We got our man Steve Rhodes at 1. We got our man Dave White at 2. Of them. And, you know, we got folks checking the Tigers Den. New front page at TFNN.com. I see those uh, subscribers coming in right now. Thanks, folks. Stay